Hi, I'm Joanne Banco, author, designer, and sewing instructor. Today, I want to show you a really, really sharp technique that you can use to make creative couching on a collar. Take a look at my uh, coat on the dress form here. This has a, a very broad collar, lots of space for embellishment. And this style is really being seen a lot. You know, coats are very classic style. They don't change a lot um, over the years, except for some details here and there. And a lot of the details that we're seeing currently show collars um, that are very broad, perfect for embellishment. Now take a look at the fabric, luxury to the hilt, but very, very affordable and very easy to care for. This is a washable faux suede. And in my opinion, it's even better than the real thing. It's super easy to sew, super easy to take care of, and doesn't require any kind of special cleaning or maintenance. It's highly washable and really, really feels great to wear. So let me go over to the table and show you a little bit about what inspired me to create this collar. I started looking at patterns and I found this one that had a great all over design that obviously was woven into the fabric, but that's what gave me the spark. And I thought, hmm, wouldn't that be great if the jacket itself was just the plain suede and I took that beautiful collar area and couched all over it. You're gonna see how easy couching is in just a few minutes. The suede, like I said, is very, very washable, comes in lots of colors very soft and very flexible. Now I am gonna prep my pieces that I cut for my collar and do a few things to get ready for the couching. So, very important, I wanna apply interfacing. I have my own favorites, you probably do too, but my two go-to interfacings that I use a lot, especially when I'm creating a garment that I don't wanna lose the flow or the softness um, to the fabric. We call that hand. And you don't wanna change the hand of the fabric. You want it to behave much like it does without interfacing, and we don't really need a lot of added stiffening. So here's your choices here. We've got fusible trico. This one feels just like a slip. And then another fusible knitted interfacing that's actually a bias interfacing. So this one stretches in all directions and makes it very soft. I'm just gonna put my hand under both of them and you can see how the one on the right here with the cream color has just a little more stiffness while this all bias fusible interfacing is very soft. So I prepped my entire collar pattern piece with the interfacing before I did the couching. And you know, there's always more than one way you can accomplish what you're trying to do when you're um, adding creative options to the garments that you're constructing from scratch. And in this particular case, we could do one of two things. We could cut an oversized piece of fabric like I have here. We could randomly couch all over the place. You're gonna see there's no right and wrong for this. And of course it's stabilized. When we're finished then, if let's say we wanted to make pockets that had the couching trim, we just simply then place our pattern on there. I've got enough on here on this oversized piece to cut two pocket pieces. And then I just sew it all up just like I would normally. Now what I chose to do is cut one in uh, two actually, because I need two collars, two entire pieces, apply the fusible interfacing and cut them to the actual collar size. So that I'm all ready now to go ahead and get to the couching. Let's head over to the machine. I've got everything set up and we'll get started. I have got the couching attachment already on. It takes just a couple minutes to set it up, but I'm using a special attachment on this particular machine because it helps keep my flat fabric flat, smooth, and firm so that my couching can meander all over and it ends up looking beautiful and smooth when I'm done. So I've got the um, normal foot replaced with the couching foot. You can see my couching foot here and I've got a little wire that actually feeds the uh, cord or the yarn into a small hole of the foot and you know, sewing is all about options. So you may have some other options. Check with your, you know, your sewing machine shop and see what's available for your machine. You may have this exact same accessory available to you, but you also might have options for something like a, a braiding foot or some type of other cording foot, like a pearl 
type foot. So you can use that. Any one of these will work in a very similar manner. This one does have some added benefits though. So take a look at my little stitch sampler here. All about options, once again, we've got so many beautiful decorative stitches built into the machine that it, it, you know, it's, sometimes it's hard to get started on your project because you're having so much fun just playing with them all. But characteristic of couching, and let me define a little bit what couching means. We're simply laying trim down on the fabric. In this case, it's a very plain, simple yarn, and we're stitching over it to anchor it to the fabric. So that's what couching actually means. I can use something as simple as a zigzag stitch, or I can get into some of my more fancy decorative stitches. Look at all the different options here. And then take a look at the colors. You can see I've used a whole different range of colors because again, each different stitch and each color gives you an entirely different look. You're the designer, you pick and choose. So we're gonna look at the screen in the machine now. And I am already into a menu where I have a wide variety of choices where these stitches came from. And it's set up just ordinary right now, but I'm gonna sneak back here, I'm gonna pop in this little plug right there. That tells the machine that I am now using this special belt-driven foot. Guess what happens? If I turn pages on the machine, I've got stitches that are darkened. I've also got stitches that are light. What that means is the machine is telling me what stitches I can use with this foot and what stitches should not be used with it. In fact, I can't even access those stitches. So it makes it all super easy for me. All right, you ready to see some couching? I've got two pins here. That's all I needed as a, a rough guideline. A lot of times when you have a, a coat on a collar, you'll see where the pattern changes. It dips in just a little bit, and that's where the collar would normally flip back, um, commonly called a roll line. And it's very, very distinctive. Of course, I could couch the entire area and just have the rest of the couching be hidden inside. It doesn't matter. You can do more, you can do less. That's part of the fun of it. But this is gonna give me just a little bit of a guideline. So I'm only leaving that pin there for just a minute. I'm gonna get rid of it. I'm gonna lower my presser foot and I am good to go. Now, again, no right or wrong. I simply swirl, twirl, pivot, any which way I wanna go, the cording is being held in place by that tiny little hole that I showed you on this foot fed right into there so there's no way that can go astray. That gives me complete freedom to just swirl and twirl. Get rid of this pin because I'm heading towards the end there. And I'm ready to go some more. So I can let my um, foot down, my needle down, raise the presser foot, just slide it around, and again, just keep on going. That cord is gonna automatically be caught, automatically be anchored. I've already set my stitch width and stitch length to um, allow that cord to be anchored down, but I don't, want, I don't want too much stitching, I don't want too little stitching. The key is, if you have too much stitching, then you're going to notice more of the stitches and less of the cord or less of the yarn. If you have too little stitching, you're gonna have an, a lot of extra space. And that would um, perhaps cause your cording to maybe get caught, maybe you wear rings or jewelry or you brush up against something. So keep that in mind as well. Now, while I'm doing this, I want you to see the yarn is coming off very, very nice and easy, and we're just swirling that around. So again, I could do more, I could do less, I could keep filling that in. Now, we get to constructing the jacket, we want to um, be concerned with some seam finishes. I love the serger, I did it in a contrast so that you could see it. There it is in a matching thread, look how nice that blends in but you likely have many different overcasting stitches to choose from, and there are lots of different options for that. Top stitching is great on a jacket like this. Take a look at, at the belt, at the pockets. That anchors that down and makes it very easy to sew. Be sure to visit the website. We've got complete instructions for you and a tip sheet 
for couching creatively on your collars and sewing with this beautiful faux suede.